Hello, Croiso, Fulcher. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the next instalment of Irish Studies, where we have been analysing the book of the taking of Ireland. Please remember that this is part five of a series, and although you can watch the video as a standalone episode, I recommend that you begin at episode one. Today we're going to be looking at how the Brigantes, which we looked at in the previous episode, may be related to a group of people known as the Brigues, who are described in some accounts as moving through Thrace and into Asia Minor, where they would become known as the Phrygians. We will also be looking at the etymology of the name of the goddess Brigid and Brigantia, which is said to mean the High One, and how this may fit in with the context of the Phrygian goddess Kubale or Sibylle, who was also known as the Mountain Mother. So without further ado, let's get into the sources. In A General History of Spain by Luis de Mierne Terget, he discusses the regions of Spain which were inhabited by a Celtic people whom the Romans referred to as the Brigantes. He says their king was known as Brigus and says that all the names of their castles ended in the suffix Briga. He tells us that these Brigantes were also known under the names Brigis, Brigues and Brigades and goes on to say that an arm of these people would move into Thrace and then Asia Minor where the name Brigis would change to Phrygians by what he describes as a corruption of the word. Quote, then they produced Brigus, king or governor of these troops, who began a civil government and built, as they say, many castles in Spain, which carried the marks of his name all in a manner ending in Briga, such as Nometo Briga, Mito Briga, and such like. The Spanish antiquities say that of him the assemblies of people were called Brigis, and afterwards Brigues and Brigades which did so multiply under his government and conduct as they were forced to send whole armies out of the country to seek new habitations, whereof some of these Brigis coming into Thrace and then into Asia, they brought the name of Brigi, which since by corruption hath been turned into Phrygia." End quote. Herodotus also tells us the Brigues were a group of people who were neighbours of the Macedonians living in Europe before they moved into Asia Minor, where they would then become known as the Phrygians. Quote, As the Macedonians say, these Phrygians were called Brigues as long as they dwelt in Europe, where they were neighbours of the Macedonians. But when they changed their home to Asia, they changed their name also and were called Phrygians. End quote. We also get another reference to this group of people in another quote by Herodotus, where he says they inhabited Thrace. Here Herodotus refers to them as Brugoi Thraikes or Thracian Briges in his account of the Persian invasion of Thrace, which was carried out by Mardonios, the nephew of Darius I. Quote, Meanwhile, Mardonios and the land army, while encamping in Macedonia, were attacked in the night by the Brigian Thracians, and many of them were slain by the Brigians, and Mardonios himself was wounded. End quote. German scholar and professor of classical Greek studies, Karl Ottfried Müller, writing in 1839, tells us the various derivatives of the name Briges. Quote, the Phrygians at this time, the immediate neighbours of the Macedonians, by whom they were called Bruges, Brugoi and Briges. They dwelt at the foot of snowy Bermius, where the fabulous rose of King Midas was situated. According to Hesychius, Brecus or Berecuntios is the same word as Brooks. Bruges was also used by Ennius and as it appears by Marcus Brutus. End quote. German author Hermann Müller also writes extensively about the Brigantes of Spain, Ireland, Britain and elsewhere in Europe and also connects them to the Phrygians. He also discusses the variations of the name, specifically the interchangeability of the letter I and E in Brig and Breg respectively, as well as the interchangeability of the letter G and K 
citing the Phrygian group known as the Berecuntes as an example of such a shift. Quote, it cannot be denied, therefore, that the Briges, Brigantes of the north, bear the same name as the Briges, Friges, and Berecuntes of the south. End quote. The Phrygians worshipped Kubele or Sibylle, the great mother goddess. She is thought to have also been known as the mother of the mountain, based on an inscription found carved into a Phrygian shrine which reads Matar Kubelea. This appellation is also supported by several classical authors. For example, in Hippolytus by Euripides, there is a mention of the mountain mother alongside the Corbantes, who were worshippers of Sibylle. Quote, I hear that this is the third day that she has kept her mouth without food and pure of Demeter's grain, and that because of a hidden suffering, she wants to put into the wretched harbour of death. Are you possessed, my daughter? Whether from Pan or Hecate, or from the revered Corubantes are you wandering, or from the mountain mother? End quote. The mountain held deep significance for the ecstatic worship of Sibylle, with many of the classical sources describing the orgiastic rites as taking place on the mountain itself. Quote, Standing in the woods, there was an ancient vine with a massive trunk withered to the roots. They cut this down to make a sacred image of the mountain goddess, and when Argos had skillfully shaped it, they set it up on a rocky eminence under the shelter of some tall oaks, the highest trees that grow, and made an altar of small stones nearby. Then, crowned with oak leaves, they began the sacrificial rites, invoking the Mater Dindumene, most worshipful, who dwells in Phrygia, and with her, Titias and Kulenos, for these two are singled out as dispensers of doom and assessors to the Mater Idaia. End quote. What's interesting about this is that the goddess which the Brigantes worshipped in Ireland and Britain, Brigid and Brigantia respectively, the latter of which reaching us by means of an interpretatio romana, contains a root word which is found in other words relating to height and elevation, and in the Encyclopedia of Indo-European Culture, the authors state that the goddess's name means something like the High One or similar. It is cognate with names from other branches of Proto-Indo-European, such as Burgund, a woman's name in Old High German, and Brati in Sanskrit. The authors then go on to say that they are certain the derivation of the word comes from a root meaning high, hill, or mountain. Quote, Burguntia, high one. Cognate with Old Irish Bridget, Old British Brigantia, Old High German Burgund, Old Indic Bratty, high or lofty. The derivation is clearly from Burg, high hill or mountain, and the Old British Brigantia is cognate with the Old Indic adjectival form, which may occur as a woman's name. The Celtic goddess is attested in both Britain and Ireland, and also the British and early Irish tribal name Brigantes, of whom Brigantia would have been the titular deity. End quote. Brigantia, in depictions from the Romano-British period, is usually depicted holding a spear with the Gorgon's head displayed on her chest. Her head is decorated with a corona muralis or walled crown, which was an emblem of tutelar deities, those who were seen to be a guardian, patron or protector of a city, place or nation. Statues and busts of Sibylle are often also found wearing the walled crown, signifying she also fulfilled this role, and although Brigantia was often conflated with Minerva in the Romano-British period, it doesn't necessarily mean she was always strictly viewed in this light. Does this potential link between the Brigantes and Phrygians give us additional context as to why Brigantia was referred to as the High One? There is evidence which shows that the worship of Sibylle and Attis was carried out in the Romano-British period, particularly in Brigantes' territory. Two altars were found dedicated to Sibylle, one at Corbridge and the other at Chester's Roman fort, both in close proximity to Hadrian's Wall. 
The most intriguing piece of evidence, however, was found at Cataractonium, which became known today as Catterick, North Yorkshire, which was also Brigantes territory. Here a male skeleton was discovered, which had been given a female burial, and this has led archaeologists to interpret the burial as one which was consistent with that of a Gallus, a member of the eunuch priesthood of Sibylle, who would castrate themselves and wore long hair and women's clothing in imitation of the Great Mother. Here is what English heritage has to say regarding the burial. Quote, the most enticing piece of evidence for the Gollies presence in Roman Britain, however, is found south of Hadrian's Wall at Catterick in North Yorkshire, at the site of Roman Cataractonium. In 2002, archaeologists uncovered an unusual burial. The skeletal remains appeared to be male, but was buried with women's clothing and jet jewellery. Although all Romans wore jewellery, only women wore jet, which was associated with childbirth and magic. It is difficult for archaeologists to interpret identity through burial goods, but this is a strong indicator that the person was not seen as a man by the people who buried them. Isotopic analysis of the remains, although inconclusive, has suggested that they grew up either in the south of Britain or in a similar climate. The quality and quantity of their jewellery, some of which might have come from nearby Whitby, also gives the impression that they were well off. Archaeologists have interpreted this individual as a gallus, especially as we know that the cult of Attis and Sibylle were present in northern Britain. End quote. A similar burial was also discovered in Hungate, York, which was also Brigantes territory. The question is, does this evidence show a cult practice which was introduced by the Romans, or was it one that was already present, which was allowed to persist to some extent under Roman rule? Finally, does this information presented in this episode also help to explain why Phineas from Irish mythology seems to bear some resemblance to Phineas from Greek mythology. We looked at this in a previous episode. If you missed it, you can check it out here. If the Brigantes are connected to the Briges, who would later become known as the Phrygians, then that could help explain why we find a name of one of Phineas's sons, Cluteus, on over 10 inscriptions found in the regions of modern-day Spain, which were occupied by the Brigantes. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching. We'll continue this journey in the next episode. Catch you on the next one. All boy, out.